Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes. Our apologies for being a little late to get to the live stream. That's on me. Uh, Blake, it's been a wild day in the SEC so far. You've got LSU barely taking care of business. Uh, Tennessee taking care of business with an exclamation point. And Vandy taking care of business with an SEC win for the first time in, what was it, 1,119 days? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of days. Um, I, can't, I can't count that high, so I just went with the number of the 26-game uh, SEC losing streak. But, yeah, it was um, – it's been an interesting start to the day. Uh, Tennessee just put up point number 65 here, maybe about to be 66 after the extra point That's on Missouri. Incredible. And uh, I know a lot of people are complaining they were throwing the long ball up, whatever. Um, but I, I I go back to what I said, Chris. I think style points matter. And you can yeah, say what you want. Um, blame it on the committee. Blame it how it's done, I guess. But, I mean – I don't know. I get it. Trust me. I get it uh, on the, the side of the people who say you shouldn't be throwing the ball doing that. But um, I can't say I'm shocked that teams do this in these scenarios. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. So um, nonetheless, uh, quite a bounce back for the balls. They're putting up some points. But like you said, I think uh, clearly, you know, LSU, Arkansas was a, you know, a grinded out game for both teams. Um, you know, I think if you'd I think in that scenario, you know, not having KJ Jefferson was obviously significant for Arkansas, but at the same time, I mean, their defense was able to keep this thing to where they had a chance, you know, they had their chances to win the game. And, um, you know, that's really all you can ask for, I think, in that setting, right? So um, Jaden Daniels just could not get anything going whatsoever. And that's the first time we've said that in a while. And, um, you know, credit to the Arkansas defense for stepping up and making some big plays. Um, you know, was LSU as crisp as they could have been offensively? Of course not. But I think defensively, I mean, Harold Perkins was just, my goodness, how yeah. many big plays. He was the one that made the play at the end of the game, right? Well, he made the play at the end of the game, and he also made the play on the one that was not called a, uh, that was called an incomplete pass before that. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, again, LSU, we talked about what their defense can be and uh, what we saw it there in that game at Arkansas, some big plays towards the end of that game. Um, so yeah, be able to hold on for the victory there. And then of course, Vanderbilt, I mean, I can't imagine what Kentucky fans are thinking right now, um, because they didn't look good at all. Uh, but again, I don't want to take anything away from Vanderbilt because we talked about Mike, Wright. Maybe not a lot of confidence in what he can do in this offense, but he made some big plays. There's no other way to put it in this game, but Vanderbilt position to win and, and they found a way to do it. Um, despite, you know, even after that late, like you thought that was the dagger after Chris Rodriguez yeah. made that. 72 yard run um you thought that was it but uh, vanderbilt came back big play at the end there right to shepherd and and that was that so yeah that was i think it's tough for them to win anyway but to to give one up like that where they're losing all game they're on the road they're without their starting quarterback um and you could see it on clark lee's face yeah at the end of the game uh, it was a mixture of just relief and, and everything. Um, that that face I made a minute ago, by the way, I just I checked the box score on Tennessee. 728 yards today, Blake. That's against the what the third rated defense in the league coming in. Yeah, I mean, by the way, high 33 point. first downs, 455 passing, and that's with Hendon Hooker with a, a bad shoulder. Well, Heupel and uh, Drinkwitz just came together there at uh, midfield and saw Heupel whisper something in his ear. I, again, I know people will make something about the throwing up late or whatever, but the bigger picture is what you just said. And I mean, the numbers are just incredible. 728 total yards. Um, like you said, against the defense that we've talked about all year, that's just been really, really good. Uh, and yeah, I mean, certainly I think Tennessee defensively at times in this game had some, you know, some lapses, but when I mean, you consider what they, they did offensively here, just unbelievable. Um, but I mean, that's, that's what we expect, right? That's what we said. I mean, it's, we expect them to bounce back in a big way, uh, here in this game. When you look at what the wide receivers did, think about the big plays in this game, right? I mean, just so many big plays in terms of uh, Hyatt had what a 68 yarder. I'm um, looking him up here. How does he keep he getting the, open? 
Well, I mean, we, just... we've answered that before. They have so many guys, but that one play down the left sideline, it was just like, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, just uh, I mean, look, Tillman didn't play right, so I mean, that's that's another thing to to yeah consider in that game. But you know, McCoy had the almost a forty yarder, I think. Um, who was it? White had a fifty eight yarder. Uh, that's just, I mean, there's just a lot of big plays, and um, so yeah, I mean, it's just this is Tennessee's offense and, and we know what they're capable of. And um, again, I think this is one of those games that, you know, we, we kind of looked at it and, and felt like they could bounce back. We didn't know if they would come out a little sluggish. Um, I don't know. So um, it was, yeah, it was a pretty interesting, uh, interesting scenario for the balls back the back with a 66, 24 win over Missouri. What was the score last year, Chris? Wasn't it like, I guess, Missouri last year? What was the score? Uh, wasn't it 60 something to. Uh, yeah, it was. I think they got in the 60s and it felt like they got in the 60s in about the second quarter. 62 24 um, last year. So, Mike, they put up 683 yards. Think about that. They put up 683 yards last year against Missouri. I'm, put up I'm the idiot that thought <laughs> that Missouri might cover because of wow. the defense and because of the sting of last week. Wow. Uh, here's here, the, the weird thing about the box score. You, you look at it, and this is this is a credit to how many weapons they've got. Tennessee didn't have a 100-yard rusher today and had 10 guys who caught passes. So, like, when you look at the totals, it doesn't look like 725. Uh, but, you know, 64 yards here and 55 there uh, from, you know, 10 guys adds up after a while. Uh, and again, as you pointed out, playing without Cedric Tillman, who was their best offensive player, not named Hendon Hooker, coming into the year. Yeah, well, that was something, uh, Krusty. I think, I think we were all kind of with you, Krusty, on the um, on the, uh, the the potential trap game for LSU. I think we were all kind of riding this to be a pretty they just kind of knew something there, didn't it? Well, yeah, we talked about that. I mean, that that was a. That was a tough setup, I think, having to bounce back early game. Me and Blaine, I know, specifically talked about that on the Wednesday night live stream. Um, yeah, it just felt like a game that you just knew was going to be close. And, and even when, you know, the Jefferson thing, we're like, well, he's not playing. Well, then you're like, okay, well, maybe LSU takes care of business handily here. That didn't happen. Um, just it really was like, Chris, these are the kind of games, if you look back in certain seasons for teams that, play in an SEC championship, you know, get to a college football playoff. These are the kind of games that you probably see somewhere on their schedule where the setup is just one where, man, you're coming off a big win, and then the next game is just you have to grind the entire way to try to get a win. And, um, yeah, I mean, obviously could have been different if KJ Jefferson played, but a, n a nice win nonetheless for LSU because they were not at their best. But, again, I think Arkansas's defense stepped up and, and made some big plays just, just as the LSU defense did. So, um, yeah. So hello, bow hunting. Yeah. Vols, Vols made a bit of a, I don't know what you call it a statement. I mean, I, but still, I mean, we, that was a lot of, a lot of yards, a lot of points, as we just said, uh, they certainly have Missouri's number these past uh, couple of seasons for sure. In terms of the, the points. Okay. If you're Missouri, they just gave Elliot drink. What's a big extension and a lot of money. Now I, I'm not a big one guy game but i'm not sure how happy everybody is down there with things and and then you have that and then you have this well i mean when you've given up what a combined about 1400 yards to tennessee in the past two seasons uh yeah. it might just be a team that has your number in terms of style right but, but this is yeah i was gonna say no, this I is a it. different defense than it was a year ago to different guys it. I get it. Um, last year they were just bad. This year they've got some dudes in the secondary and on the line and a yeah. linebacker too. And it just, yeah, for whatever reason, uh, Tennessee just scores at will against them. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, um, like we said, whether you like it or not, style points matter. And Tennessee came out with some, some style points in this one. I mean, so. I, I say, I say for whatever reason, nobody misconstrued that Tennessee's the best offense probably in the country, but it, it, you you didn't expect Tennessee to get sixty five today. At least I did not. Yeah. No. I mean that's what I said. But these are these are the kind of games. I mean, really, if you looked at early on, right, in terms of like LSU, Tennessee, Kentucky, the favorites in all three of those games. Um, you know, there were some spots early on. I mean, because again, Missouri was kind of matching Tennessee early 
in different spots, but, um, you know, then it just kind of, everything fell off there for the Tigers. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, now, now we continue to look ahead. Tennessee's got to go to South Carolina next week. So how much do you think Tennessee's margin matters in the end? Because the problem is LSU, right? In this weird sequence of events, in which Tennessee wins at LSU and wins convincingly, just the way it all worked from there. And we, we both think that if – and 538 thinks this too in its prediction model pretty overwhelmingly, that if Georgia wins out, LSU wins in the title game, which I don't think it will. I think Georgia will beat LSU. Then Tennessee's the team nudged out. Um, does this – does the way Tennessee won today do anything to mitigate that? I mean, I, I don't know how it – it's just the way the dominoes fall and when they fall, which is unfair. But, I mean, that's that's a lot of the perception is that's what's going to happen. Again, that's not saying that that's how I do it, but that's where we are. Yeah, I mean, I, you said, you know, is margin of victory and stuff. I, I've said many times now since we've had this discussion, yes, I think it's going to absolutely matter. Um, and I think – you will see them take every opportunity they can to make sure that's said with emphasis in terms of um, how you win, whether anybody wants to say it or not, like they, it, it's going to matter the rest of the way, especially when you're in their situation right now, look, Texas comes out and beats TCU tonight, which, you know, by the way, I, that's a, which Texas, could very well, I, I don't Texas think is a touchdown run the favorite. Table. Well, Texas is a yeah. touchdown favorite in that game. Um, so, I mean, consider that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that obviously makes the discussion more interesting. But as we said, the LSU one is going to be the one. I mean, we're playing a lot of what-ifs still with LSU because, you know, if they play like they did today, they're not beating Georgia in the SEC championship. Um, but, you know, who knows? Crazy things have happened. Maybe Mike Leach has something up his sleeve uh, for the for the dogs tonight. But I, I, don't, I don't tend to believe that'll happen. But, um, yeah, so... We'll see, but uh, the balls are in an interesting spot and certainly bounce back with a big win. So, Yeah, and, and when we did our predictions this week, I, I think what's going to happen, I said, I, I think you'll see Tennessee win out, get the four, and play Georgia in a rematch in the, the first playoff game. That's what I think will happen. So, Yeah, we'll see if that's what happens. Um, meanwhile, what, the Commodores are, there are the Commodores under their belts. And I mean, well, let's, let's do the flip side of this first. If you're Kentucky right now, um, man, that was, you know, I said weather, the snowing, the snow game. Uh, but I still just don't, this Kentucky team, Chris, I'm, I mean, I, I think we thought this after the way they lost at Tennessee, but man, they are, the more you look at their season now, it is one of those teams where I just I can't explain it. Like they are just very inconsistent. Even in the games they've won, they've been inconsistent in some of these, right? Like, and I think that's been they just have not been that dominant team. And you've made the point before about the the whirlpool or whatever it was um, that you called them. But like, I don't know what it is. Like they just and I know what it is. The offensive line hasn't been good, um, but. I don't know. I, the Will Levis thing is too is obviously the offensive line has a big part of that, right? But man, they just—I don't know. That—that's we talked about inexcusable basketball loss for Vanderbilt against Southern Miss. I feel like that's a that's a pretty inexcusable loss for Kentucky at home against a team that lost twenty six in a row in league play. Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody out there had the uh, the money line on uh, parlay on on Vanderbilt to get beat as an eighteen point basketball favorite last night and win is an 18-point road dog in football mm -hmm. today. But if you had that, congratulations. Yeah. Um, okay, Kentucky. Then, then I want to get to the Andy. I'm, I'm a big stats guy. I mean, and people can criticize me for that, but what, what do we keep stats in? We keep them – the final score is a number. Numbers mean things. Kentucky has just not been statistically as good all year as the rankings have suggested. I mean, Kentucky was a top-10 team in the country, and I've said, hey, look, I'm not counting Kentucky out. I think Stoops is a terrific coach. They've got an identity. But when you're beating Northern Illinois by seven points with a backup quarterback that NIU had, 
they've had a lot of games kind of like that. Now, they've won some close games against good teams, and I'm not knocking those. But when you are not able to separate against teams, this stuff can happen to you. Um, we saw what happened in Knoxville a couple weeks ago. Number two, if you watch them, teams that have brought pressure on Levis, and a lot of times that comes up the middle, it seems to me, have been able to get him off his spot, whatever, force him into bad throws, or more often than not, sack him. That's what Vandy did today. Vandy is not a blitz-heavy team, but you've seen him do it at times. You saw Vanderbilt do that against Missouri a couple weeks ago and didn't give up a point in the second half. That was in Vanderbilt's bag of tricks. And we talked about it earlier in the week that if Vanderbilt does that, I thought they had a shot to make this a lot more interesting than, than people thought. And I didn't call them to win. But that is that is exactly what happened. Now, Kentucky, I thought Kentucky was going to win that game late because they found something in that offensive line, especially around the left side. And they were just giving the ball to Rodriguez time and time again. And even when Vanderbilt got a hat on it, he was pushing the pile forward for three, four, five yards. And then he busts that one at the end. Um. But, you know, and he he makes that run with five minutes left, and you think it's over. Uh, and Vanderbilt did exactly what it needed to do, which is not just score a touchdown, but run just enough clock where that took Rodriguez out of the ball game, and, and that entered it. Kentucky got the ball with 30 seconds left, and that was that. Yeah, I mean, we talk about the numbers here. You know, you talk about stats. Here's, here's some stats for you. Like, Levis's last three games, and again, I, this plays into – offensive line and the number of times i mean he's been sacked what 14 times the past three games um you know 16 to 27 for 98 yards passing three interceptions against tennessee 13 of 19 for 170 had three touchdowns in that one at missouri you've got sacked six times and today he goes 11 to 23 109 with an interception got sacked four times i mean i mean really chris like that that's your that's your projected first round NFL quarterback, and it's just not again. And I, I'm I'm, saying, I'm not blaming this on Will Levis necessarily. I mean, although I think there are some things he'd like to have back on some of these throws, but um, like that's just not. I mean, if you're a Kentucky fan, why would you not be frustrated at the of knowing that? But again, Rodriguez is a big part of what they do. I'm just saying, if you just look at that for what it mm-hmm. is, yeah. I mean, that's pretty. I think that's pretty disappointing, just in terms of, you know. The, how it's played out in that scenario. So, I think Levis is tremendously skilled. I, I don't think he has produced enough yet to, to be 1-1 or 1-3 or 1-4 or wherever he's been projected this week. Um, he's also older. He's, what, 24 at this point? I think, think there's the difference between that and a kid throwing the ball he way he throws it at, at 20. Um, and this isn't a Will Levis bash fest, but if this is the kind of game – Vanderbilt's secondary was awful. And again, I, I blame some of that more on Kentucky's offensive line. But I mean, Kentucky's got dudes who can run, Blake. Uh, Vanderbilt has had just trouble beyond belief w- with deep balls this year. I don't, I don't know. And, and here's where I fault the play calling, too. Um, they, they didn't take, I would have taken maybe one or two more shots downfield. And this is going to sound like I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth. Um, but I, I think the bigger thing was they they could not stop Rodriguez, Blake, late in that game. Their defensive line was getting tired. It's not deep. Like on the on the two point play that they missed, they throw a pass. Rodriguez is on the sidelines. Fandy gets a PI. They then go to a run play with um McLean, I think it was, and Vanderbilt stuffed it. I'm like, even if Rodriguez is gassed after a 72-yard touchdown run, don't you have him on the field? I didn't I mean, get the, that. With the way I, they were I, playing I offensively, get, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, why not? They, right? they, so. uh, they, they punted, I think, on a fourth and two at some point in the game. The fans booed. Um, you know, look, hat, hats off to Vandy for winning the game. Uh, and, and Vanderbilt also gave them a, a short field, I think, on the first field goal. But I, I think if you're Kentucky fans, you were probably questioning some things tonight with play calling. I think you question a lot of things uh, in terms of not just that, but just like I said, I, I think there has to be some disappointment 
in terms of what they've been able to get out of that offense for sure. Um, you know, and that's the difference, right? In terms of how your offense is structured. And again, we, we can't all, you're not all going to do what Tennessee does, right, Chris? But like, if yeah. you just look at that in terms of how teams run their offense, like, I think it's clear that Kentucky's offense is built around what would you say? I mean, it's, it's, it's what it's Will Levis's skill set. I think their identity of, is always power run game. And right. But, but off a little bit because of the line, yeah, but it was yeah. there today. Right. And that's what I say. It's today. like, it's, it's built around knowing that you want to run the ball, but also knowing that you have the quarterback that you have and feeling like, you know, how do we use that best and combine those two things together? Um, and, and yeah, I mean, like you said, I just, I don't know. It's, you can say it's just one of those games, but I think it, uh, I'm with you. It's been a deeper discussion, I think, on Kentucky um, as of late. And I think that's um, certainly because, again, I mean, really, realistically, right? Think about, I mean, they're basically a play or two away from losing that game last week at Missouri, too. So, um, yeah, they just have not have not played well uh, for the most part uh, over the past, you know, three weeks now. And like you said, there are even some points you can point out before that. Certainly the South Carolina loss at home. Um, those kind of guys just, yeah, it's, it's tough, but we will see for the cats. Cause who do they have next? Um, Oh, they've sorry. got Georgia and Louisville. They got Georgia next. <laughs> Yikes. Um, but I mean, that's Kentucky's won what six at this point. Yeah. And Louisville, still. by the way, has get, been getting a lot better. Yeah, six Louisville, and four. So Kentucky there are people now picking Louisville to be Clemson this week. I don't know that I see it, but, um, well, K- Kentucky's gone from, what seems like an annual New Year's Day bowl to maybe now, you know, joining us in, well, probably not Nashville. That's a better bowl than that. Maybe, maybe looking at Birmingham, maybe. We'll see. We'll start doing our bowl I mean, projections well, maybe after this week. Because they're, they're not beating Georgia next week. And and now the, I mean, like even seven and five is not sending you where you want to go if you're Kentucky at this point. Yeah. No, and that's real. if they get Louisville. So, yeah, that's true. Um, um shout out to Rusty. I feel like we need I feel like we need to talk Vandy for just a minute because we don't get a shot to do that a lot. Before you we, do when you go, yeah. We appreciate Rusty. Rusty, we appreciate the kind words. Um, you have been there supporting us uh from the start, and we we do appreciate the kind words. So, like Rusty said earlier, hit that like button, hit subscribe. If you haven't already ready, we are on the road to five thousand subscribers. Um, and so yes, we will really appreciate that. Super chats as well. Uh, we appreciate you guys. All right, on to the Commodores. Okay, well, before we go to the Commodores, a quick thank you to our presenting sponsor, Stakes. You can predict sports better than the crowd for a chance to win NFTs. With Stakes, players can cement their sports predictions against friends, other fans, and influencers forever. Don't let your sports genius go overlooked. Join Stakes and have the best predictions captured in the moment. Go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Use our invite code Southeastern14 for a double welcome bonus. Free to join, free to play. Help those who help us. Okay, now for Vandy. Clark Lee had a brutal week. Uh, the, the fans have started to turn on him. It, it sure looked like they were going to go oh for his first two years in the conference. They don't have a ton of talent. But sneakily, their offense has been better than I think most people expected. Um, I thought A.J. Swan was a really, really good-looking young player. They hit the middle of that schedule where they're playing Alabama, Georgia, and I think it just killed that team's confidence. And then Swan gets concussed last week. When you go back to Mike Wright, that's a totally different kind of offense. And Wright had kind of been in the deep freeze for for a while um, until last week. So you look at what they did today. Ray Davis was over 100 for the second straight week against an SEC team. Uh, Wright ran for what a buck 20 something and throws for the touchdown pass. Their defense, Vanderbilt, was really good on third downs today uh, after struggling on, on pretty much every town all season. Look, it, it is really hard to overcome everything that's already against Vanderbilt. Throw in a three plus year losing streak with the head coach is not one of those, by the way, I think he had the flu Clark Lee did this week too. And then the Dan Jackson mess, that was a lot going against him. And then you go to Kentucky, which you're thinking, okay, that's the northernmost school, right? They should be used to the cold and, and the freezing weather. 
and, and the run game and everything, you, you think that plays in Kentucky's favor. Um, hats off to Clark Lee today for getting past all that and, and getting that program a win that, that it really, really needed. Vandy over-under on wins to start the year was two and a half. That's four now. And I don't think they beat Florida next week. Um, but but it's not as impossible as it would have been, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, we said come to the season. I mean, a, a successful season would be winning the non-conference games you should have won, and they did that. They lost the Wake Forest one. We thought they'd lose that one. And then just get an SEC game somewhere that you're not supposed to win. And they've accomplished all that now. <laughs> I mean, that. Again, that, that to me, I said that would be a successful season. Now, obviously, people can differ on that. Thinking they were, gonna, I never thought this was going to be a team that can get to a bowl. But guess what? The two games to go, statistically, they have a chance to do it. Now, again, the yeah. chances of beating Tennessee, I think, are are very low. Um, Florida, we'll, we'll see what Florida looks like in South Carolina. But um, yeah, I think that's to me, that's all you could have asked for. I had a chance to win at Missouri, um, so. I think in that sense, for where they're going, knowing that, sure, there'll be people on the outside to laugh and say, ha, you're calling a successful season a team that won four games. But if you pay attention it to Vanderbilt football where and, they are. <laughs> and know where they are, um, it's actually it's an accomplishment because um, they, they needed something. And today was that big something that got them there, I think. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think you you now you have to chalk it up and understand that it's still a talent thing. They got to get some more talent in there to be able to compete night and, you know, week in and week out in the SEC. But for now, I think you will you will walk away from this one feeling a lot better and more optimistic about being able to put your guys in the right position to win a game like this, even if you are outmatched, out-talented, or however you want to call it. Um, they were able to do that in this one. And I thought they, for the most part, they did it against Missouri, just came up short. Um, you know, so... So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Hats off to them for finding a way to win that game because they were big underdogs and went in and, as we said, basically shut down a projected number one round, or, you know, first round draft pick at quarterback and um, bounced back after Chris Rodriguez seemingly put the dagger in with five minutes to go. And they came right back down, made a play, and, and that was it. So, okay, uh, quick sidebar because we need to talk LSU Arkansas. Um, this was not on my radar, but you know, ESPN will pop things up on your phone, which is what I use as a second screen. Did you see who got bowl eligible today? Um, Out of the blue, Connecticut. Yeah, they beat they beat Liberty. <laughs> yeah, I, that? and that's how this is semi SEC related because yeah. we won't we won't rub it in Arkansas's nose. But um, talk about beaten down. There you um, go. Good, good, good for Connecticut. You, you like yeah. to see teams like that 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 have had a dry spell, uh, to put it mildly, have some good things happen. So, the Jim Moore is the coach, right? Not not yep. the senior, but the junior. Anyway. Uh, all right, quickly, LSU, Arkansas. We talked about it a bit earlier, but uh, anything you want to kind of go into? What, on that what one? were we looking at with that game? I mean, did, did that box score not? I, 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 if you if you'd said this is what the box score is going to look like in that one, I would have said you're crazy. I don't know, Chris. I I don't know about that. Like I I thought this was going to be a grind. Okay. I mean, I, I truly did. You like, you had Jaden Daniels throwing for what was it eighty? Well, yeah, that that you could not eighty six yeah. yards against but, but, against Arkansas. I <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I listen. I get what you're saying. <laughs> I'm just pointing out. I thought I was on the on the bandwagon of this was going to be a tough game and you could see a sluggish sort of LSU team, but I think it was more than just being sluggish. It was Arkansas's defense stepped up and made some plays. So to that point, I agree with you. Um, but you know, I don't even, what was the over under on this game coming in? Um, I don't think it was that high. Or maybe it, it was, up. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yes. I want to say 55 ish. Let me maybe. Check. Um, it was like, it was a, like I said earlier, it was one of those games you circle on your schedule. You know you're probably going to have at some point in the season, and this felt like the setup. An early game coming off a big win. We talked it had the hangover effect, man. This was the mental game for LSU, and they, I don't know, early on at least, well, for a good portion of that game. Um, yeah. And I'm not taking anything away from Arkansas because I tell you right now, I would not have thought Arkansas would have been in the game not having KJ Jefferson. 
but there they were with the chance. And, you know, Sanders only had 46 yards on the ground. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it was, I think you probably expected more of a potential high scoring game, but I think when Perkins or Scott Perkins, uh, well, he, he was a big reason why it wasn't a high scoring game, but with Jefferson out too for Arkansas, that didn't help. So over under 62 and a half in that game. Yeah. I was gonna say it probably went up a bit. I, I figured that. Yeah. So they got yeah. about a, a little over a third of the way there. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. This was, um, but these are the kind of wins that good teams get. You're able to find a way to win the game. And that's what Brian Kelly said after the game. He called it a grind. Like I, uh, it's going to be a grind. <laughs> uh, if you expect anything different, I just think it was, it was inevitable because Arkansas kind of went a nothing to lose spot after losing that game last week to Liberty. And, um, you know, you thought they would step up and play well. It's just, again, I, I think, and we can play the what if game on a lot of stuff. But obviously, if Jaden Daniels, you play that game ten times, I don't think he has probably the stat line he had. Um, if you play or that game KJ ten times, plays. Well, as I was gonna say, if you play the game ten times yeah. and KJ Jefferson plays, Arkansas is winning some of those games. Um, but they didn't win today, and that's all that matters. Arkansas has got to get one more to get bowl eligible, and that's Ole Miss and Missouri coming up. Missouri on the road. Yeah, M- I mean, Missouri, yeah. Arkansas. I, I I cannot even fathom a guess at what's going to happen in that one in two weeks. <laughs> well, we'll see. Which is um, not good when that's kind of our job here. <laughs> I know, I know. By the way, I'm gonna pull this comment up real quick because yes. you know I know you've been leaving this comment on all of our videos, and I it's been cracking me up. Um, the Ryan Day look alike. <laughs> finally, believing in LSU. You've left this comment on multiple videos. I appreciate it now. Um. I believe in your basketball. You need to game. come with an Ohio State. That's what you should have done. See, you you got lazy. No, you didn't get lazy. You just I know I was going to do a costume. You, you could have you could have at least popped on an Ohio State hoodie. Yeah. And and pull that I can't off. Do that on an SEC show. Come on. There's no way. Please. Well, you could. Um, I mean, it might get us no. unsubscribed in droves, but well, I I appreciate the thoughts. I I don't really think I've been that down on LSU, but I have picked against them in some games. I'll give you that. Um, but I am higher on the, I'm higher on their basketball team than probably other people are. I think they're going to be pretty good with those guys from Mercy. Their football team's not bad either, are they? They're eight and two. And now what? I mean, what are we, I mean, here's the setup, right? If you're LSU now, um, if Alabama wins, LSU's in the SEC championship, correct, Chris? That's the setup here. Yeah. Um, LSU plays UAB next week, then they play at AM. I mean, should be heavy favorites in both, I would think. So should be, but th- those are not those are not show up in you win it games. Either. Well, no, I'm not saying that, but I think that they're is today proved. Yeah, I think they're. I think they'll be okay. Um, so I we'll think see. they will too, and and I think today would probably get a little attention yeah. in that regard. Yeah, I mean, it depends by the on way, you, you yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, people, you mentioned hoops. Just letting people know, we did a hoops video last night after all the games were over. So if you're looking for that, we do have some hoops talk up on the channel. Well, and speaking of LSU, what are they doing? Um, the LSU commenter here. Why are they playing their games on weird days here? They're playing a game today. They're playing right now, or they're playing a couple hours maybe. Um, so yeah, um, they they played on Wednesday night. They were the the team playing the off night. They beat Kansas City. Now they're going to play Arkansas State uh, this evening. So we'll see. But, yeah, we do got some basketball stuff up. If you guys want to check that out. Also, anything you have, quickly uh, get it into the comments here. If you have any questions, thoughts on any of the games moving forward, we're watching Ole Miss and Bama play a um, – well, it's about to call it a shutout game. It looks like Ole Miss is about to score here. So uh, we'll see what happens in that one. And, of course, George goes to Mississippi State. Um, and uh, what else? What else, my friend? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I forgot game. Florida. Well, Florida, Florida yeah. has started, and and Florida has taken a seven nothing lead on a an Anthony Richardson touchdown run. Yeah, Marshawn Lloyd. That I, we've been looking for that. I don't, I don't know if he's playing or not. Um, I'll find out. I know Shane Beamer said that. Uh, Jaheim Bell had the first two carries for them, so I would presume yeah, that's well. your answer. Yeah, yeah, okay, Lloyd's out. So I just think that's not – if he would have played, I think, you know, I just think without him – I mean, Florida's defense hasn't been great. Let's call it what it is. But I just think Lloyd adds such a different dimension that if they had him in there, they would be able to take advantage of that a little bit more than they will without him probably. But we'll see. Um, maybe let's throw the long ball and 
Meet them that way. I don't know. All right, Chris. Well, if these guys, uh, we don't have anything else, we'll probably come back and do a Alabama Ole Miss um, reaction here in a little while sometime. So we can go ahead and wrap this one up and uh, come back with some thoughts on that one here later on. Ole Miss is now at the Alabama 2. Nobody scored in this one yet. You're probably ahead of me because you're always ahead of me. I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to reveal what happens, but um, that's okay. You, you'll you'll see how it plays Nothing's out. Nothing's bundled up like a snowman. Well, listen. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We appreciate you guys. All the supports, um, super chats, as always. And yeah, um, we will. We'll do another one of these later on. So, parting thoughts. Nope. Congratulations all to right. all the teams that won games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks to Rusty and Krusty for being here. Rusty and Krusty. Ross. Where's the Harrison of... family? Um, I don't know. May, may have been at the game. You don't know. So, Where's Tyler? Tyler's been AWOL lately. Tyler has a he's... small child. I, I think know. Tyler's going to be AWOL say. for the next five years. So, um, yeah. So, we'll see. Almost scores here. We'll be back with thoughts on that later. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. We'll try to have another live stream tonight. Um, for those of you waiting for our live stream earlier, that was my fault. I was late in getting to the mic, needed to take care of some other stuff first. And so that kept our crowds down and kept some of you waiting. So I apologize for that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. We are Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes, and we should see you later tonight with the wrap-up on Ole Miss and Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, and, and perhaps some more.